Hey, Jamie Hartley again from Crossfader and welcome back to the Serato DJ Lite tutorial series. This is all about helping you get started as a DJ for free. If you haven't done so already, click the link in the description to download the software and download our Crossfader music pack full of tracks so you can follow along step by step in each of these tutorials. In this first lesson, we're going to focus on how to import and manage your music library as well as some of the basic player features. This is all about getting comfortable with the software. Let's head over there now. Welcome to the Serato DJ Lite software. This is a great tool for learning how to mix and perform basic blends. First up, we need to import the music from the Crossfader music pack. In Serato DJ Lite, we can use crates to organize our music. Add a crate and double click to rename it Crossfader music pack. To import music, navigate to files and locate the folder on your computer. Then just drag and drop each genre folder onto the crate section of the software. This automatically adds the music to a crate with the same name. Now drag the genre labeled crates onto the top of the Crossfader Music Pack one. Repeat this process with the other genres we have provided, turning them into sub crates. This is a great way to start managing your music library. Next, we need to analyze the music ready to DJ with. To do this, go to the entire music collection. Select all with either Command or Control A, whether you're a Mac or Windows user. Now drag and drop them onto the button labeled Analyze Tracks. After the tracks have been analyzed, you'll notice a BPM value has been added to each. The BPM is very useful for DJs because it indicates what speed the track is. Ideally, we want to mix songs that are close in BPM to one another. If you can't see the BPM value or want to organize your music in a different order, just right click on the column header to display more sorting options. Now that you have successfully analyzed and organized this music, we're going to load a track up to check out the player's features. In the house crate, I am going to drag and drop Ben Rainey's house tool onto the left hand side and Josh Hunter one two step onto the right hand side. You can also use that shortcut shift and the left and right arrow key to load as well. It's well worth getting used to the different shortcuts. First, you'll notice that each track has an overview waveform which you can click and scroll through the track to check out the different parts. You also can click and drag the waveform on the screen. Don't expect to be doing any fancy scratch techniques just with your mouse, but it's a good way to get used to and familiar with the audio and the sounds. Next, to play a track, on the left hand side we can click the play button here, or alternatively you can use the space bar to start and stop, or the W key on your keyboard. On the right hand side we can repeat that process with the play button, or we can use the enter key on the keyboard, or the S key. Again, it's really worth getting used to these shortcut keys because we're going to be using them lots more within this tutorial series. For each track, we can adjust the BPM value. The BPM's here and we can click and drag it upwards and downwards to ultimately change the BPM. If we press play now, this track will be playing at 119.8 BPM, which is 3.36% slower. As we change that, we can see the different readouts and the different speeds. The musical note next to the BPM turns the key lock on and off. If we turn this off now, you'll notice the track gets higher in pitch. Turn it back on, it goes back to the original pitch. This just stops if we end up pushing the track too much, it stops it sounding quite strange. For this tutorial series, we're going to leave the key lock on and I'm just going to reset the BPM. To reset the BPM, you can hold the command or control button and click the box to then reset. If at any point you need to go back to the start of the track, we can use this backward arrow here to reset back to the start position. Let's go back to the start of each track. In the center of the players, we have a crossfader. This allows us to mix and blend between the two different tracks. In the center, both tracks will be heard. Towards the left-hand side, just the left-hand track, and towards the right-hand side, just the right. In this position, for example, the right-hand deck will be louder than the left-hand deck. If we press play on both sides, they won't necessarily be in time, but we can just blend back and forth between the two. The other option, as these are out of time, is the sync option, and we can click sync to hopefully lock the two tracks at the same BPM value. But that doesn't mean they're going to be lined up together. To correct this, you may need to use the plus and minus to nudge the track, to try and nudge the track in time. By holding the plus and minus, we can practice our timing, taking a track off beat, and putting it back on beat. Let's just stop both tracks for now. 
We're going to get way more into the mixing and timing of tracks in the next lessons. But for now, just get familiar with all of these features. To turn sync off, just click the off button and the BPMs will return back to their original value. Underneath the crossfader, we also have this button to show and hide the loop and hot cue options. We're going to be looking at these in later lessons. For now, I'm going to hide them so that I can see more of the waveform and the other options, the other player options above. If you're finished with a track, use the eject button to get rid of that track out of each player. Get familiar with those shortcut keys, get familiar with the player and the crossfader, and then move on to the next lesson where we will start actually mixing some tracks. Thank you so much for watching and taking part in this tutorial series. If you want to watch the next lesson straight away, just click the thumbnail or it'll be in the description. I look forward to helping you start your own DJ journey.